few memories from my childhood stick quite like the rare and wonderful occasions that my dad would read something to my sister and I. It only happened a very, very small handful of times, and after racking my brain to come up with examples, I could only think of two. The Hobbit, once when I was about seven or eight, and at some point in the distant past, many, many years before that, a poem called The Cremation of Sam McGee by Robert Service. It's a poem, takes about five minutes to read, but I don't think a synopsis is the proper way to experience it, otherwise I would give one here. If read correctly, it can really, really pull you into this dark, cold, gritty world that the author is presenting. There are a few orators that rival my dad, and if you guys are familiar with his channel, I'm sure a lot of you probably agree, but I will do my best. So without further ado, here is the cremation of Sam McGee. The Cremation of Sam McGee by Robert W. Service There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold, and the Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake Labarge I cremated Sam McGee. Now Sam McGee was from Tennessee where the cotton blooms and blows, why he left his home in the south to roam round the pole God only knows. He was always cold, but the land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell. Though he'd often say in his homely way, he'd sooner live in hell. On a Christmas day, we were mushing our way over the Dawson Trail. Talk of your cold through a parka's fold, it stabbed like a driven nail. If our eyes we'd close, then the lashes froze till sometimes we couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. And that very night as we lay packed tight in our robes beneath the snow, and the dogs were fed and the stars overhead were dancing heel and toe, he turned to me and Cap says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess, and if I do, I'm asking that you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low that I couldn't say no, then he says with a sort of moan, it's the cursed cold, and it's got right hold till I'm chilled clean through to the bone. Yet taint being dead, it's my awful dread of the icy grave that pains. So I want you to swear that foul or fair, you'll cremate my last remains. A pal's last need is a thing to heed, so I swore I would not fail. And we started on at the streak of dawn, but God, he looked ghastly pale. He crouched on the sleigh and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. There wasn't a breath in that land of death and I hurried, horror driven, with a corpse half hid that I couldn't get rid because of a promise given. It was lashed to the sleigh and it seemed to say you may tax your brawn and brains but you promise true, and it's up to you to cremate those last remains. Now a promise made is a dead unpaid, and the trail has its own stern code. In the days to come, though my lips were dumb, in my heart how I cursed that load. In the long, long night by the lone firelight, while the huskies round in a ring, howled their woes to the homeless snows, oh God, how I loathe the thing. And every day that quiet clay seemed to heavy and heavier grow. And on I went, though the dogs were spent and the grub was getting low. The trail was bad and I felt half mad, but I swore I would not give in. And I'd often sing to the hateful thing, and it hearkened with a grin. Till I came to the marge of Lake Labarge, and a derelict there lay. It was jammed in the ice, but I saw in a trice it was called the Alice May. And I looked at it, and I thought for a bit, and I looked at my frozen chum. Then here, I said with a sudden cry, is my crematorium. 
Some planks I tore from the cabin floor and I lit the boiler fire. Some coal I found that was lying around and I heaped the fuel higher. The flames just soared and the furnace roared such a blaze you seldom see. And I burrowed a hole in the glowing coal and I stuffed in Sam McGee. Then I made a hike for I didn't like to hear him sizzle so. And the heavens scowled and the huskies howled and the winds began to blow. It was icy cold but the hot sweat rolled down my cheeks and I don't know why. And the greasy smoke and an inky cloak went streaking down the sky. I do not know how long in the snow I wrestled with grisly fear. But the stars came out and they danced about ere again I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but I bravely said, I'll just take a peep inside. I guess he's cooked and it's time I looked, then the door I opened wide. And there sat Sam, looking cool and calm in the heat of the furnace roar. And he wore a smile you could see a mile, and he said, please close that door. It's fine in here, but I greatly fear you'll let in the cold and storm. Since I left Plum Tree down in Tennessee, it's the first time I've been warm. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. And the Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. And the northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake LaBarge, I cremated Sam McGee. Hey, thank you all so much for watching that. I really enjoyed making it. It was a lot of fun. It's very near and dear to my heart, and I'm very happy to share that with you. If you want to see more of this, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to do more of these. If you absolutely despise what I just did and just want to see more cabin stuff, please give me ideas. I always need more ideas. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, toil for your food. Good night. <laughs>